Guys, welcome to What's Barking Local. It's Jerry Miller. It's good to be with you on a gorgeous, gorgeous Wednesday mm -hmm. across Charlottesville, Almoral County, Central Virginia, and frankly, the globe here <laughs> on Facebook, the most visited website um, in the world. What's Barking Local, the entire mission of this program, and it's powered by Animal Connection, Central Virginia's longest running all natural pet store. The entire mission of this program is to positively spotlight animals, in Charlottesville, Almore County, Central Virginia, people doing big time things. And on that note, we're gonna welcome the star of the show, Patty Bowden to the set. Um, Harris Tolbert, let's go to the studio cam and then a two shot with <laughs> Patty and I. Oh boy. Um, I'm excited <laughs> for this show. I am too, this is like full circle for me. I'm very excited. Tell us why it's full circle. Well, the, the two ladies that are here are longtime students of one of my mentors and uh, Wendy Volhard. Wendy Volhard is known worldwide for what she does uh, in holistic nutrition, homeopathics, herbs. She's uh, a dog obedience expert. I mean, she does so many things to make the lives of dogs better. And she surprisingly now lives in Virginia, which is great. She hopes two camps a year, uh, one for dog training and the other one for people like us and like for my two guests to learn about training and, and uh, and holistic care for the dogs. And she has a lovely line of food that we're gonna talk about. And it's just a great program. And uh, here we go. Here we Let's go. Coach yeah. Skip Hudgens, thank you for watching. Candace, thank you for watching. Chris, thank you for watching. Like and share the feed. I'm going to introduce you guys. But before I do, I'd like you to introduce our guests. Right. We have Brenda and Jennifer. We do. Jen Carter is with Volhard Dog Nutrition and she does obedience and she knows the products well and she's you know she's what's helping getting this food has always been known uh, well in the United States but now it's got a, a much bigger following and they've done some beautiful repackaging by the way and we're just trying to get this product a little more mainstream but it's so much more than just some food. I mean this this program is more uh, like choosing the right foods for the season, the right protein. Um, it's knowing how to listen to your dog as uh, more by kinesiology to figure out what the right food is for them at any given time. It works with herbs, it works with homeopathy. There's so many things that are involved with this method that are just great to know and are widely available for people to learn and if you can tune into this kind of thing you will have new problems with your dog tracy yep. cochran um men chaka i'm sorry if i messed that name up <laughs> oh. tracy hi trace she's watching from <laughs> houston texas right wow. now nice. um, wow nice hello trace tracy. is the bee's knees <laughs> welcome to the show hey trace like and share the feed for us brenda i've known for um two or three dog fests mm -hmm. that's met correct after dog mm -hmm. fest. she's been a long time friend of animal connection right. she has yeah. beautiful dogs and she, she's been a longtime supporter of Wendy's camp. I love it. And uh, she, yeah. kn she knows a whole lot of stuff. And, and I'm meeting Something. Jen for the first time today. Mm -hmm. I'll start with you since we're now getting to know each other. We like to start with what we call as the birth story or kind of like the flip book mm -hmm. of your professional and personal life. So I'm going to get out of the way. Give us the who, what, when, where, why of uh, Jen Carter. Awesome, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. I'm glad to be here and very humbled. Um, so Jen Carter, so Jen Carter started <laughs> off as an animal science major and biology major at UGA many, 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 many years ago and uh, then never used that degree. It was awesome and uh, became some other things and bounced around and learned a whole lot about marketing and um, about branding and about selling and um, worked for a couple of universities um, in higher education uh, I am a uh, two master's degree person on my way to my PhD. I'm just good one dissertation you. away at the moment. Yay. Which might as well be the Grand Canyon, <laughs> but all good. Um, closer than ever. And uh, when I was working for another company, uh, Volhard snatched me up. I was already feeding my dogs Volhard dog nutrition before that happened. So honestly, it was not that difficult to do because I you believed the in the product. Yeah. Right. And uh, there was... I could never work for a company where I could not use the product in my personal life and advocate for mm -hmm. that product. So honestly, I don't really need to sell this product. Um, it pretty much sells itself once people learn about it. So for me, I get to get out and talk to people 
and meet our customers and train and learn and wear a number of hats in this company and be my best self. So, What are your favorite uh, hats to wear? What are your least favorite hats to wear? Tough question. What do you love about <laughs> yeah. the job? Okay, so anything that has to do with math, uh, not that I can't do it, but I don't really get the thrill out of it. Um, I'll do it under duress. Sure. <laughs> but uh, my favorite thing to do in this, honestly, is um, I'm very much aligned with Wendy Volhard in uh -huh. the educational space and research mm -hmm. space, and Wendy will tell you that I am most passionate in that moment when I'm talking about moving the company forward and finding new ways to save dogs. I get really swelled up about that, so <laughs> that's my most yeah. favorite and most comfortable place to be. I love it, I love it. And Brenda, jump in the conversation here. Sure. You are a passionate, <laughs> passionate dog lover. I am. Um, I'm mm -hmm. excited to have you on the show here for the first time. Thank Introduce you. yourself to uh, our audience and then Patty, you jump sure. in. Sure. <laughs> um, I became devoted to Wendy about 10 and a half years ago um, after I lost a dog um, that I had for a short period of time um, to a disease and I thought there's got to be a better way because we want our pet family to be with us as long as we can because their lives are short as it is. So I I thought there's got to be a better way, got to be a better way. And then I discovered Wendy Walhard's camp. She so graciously allowed me to come um, for a couple days at first. And after those first two days, I became addicted and then became every year thereafter the full time. So I've been going for about, like I said, 10 and a half years. And um, as Patty mentioned, her book <laughs> yes. becomes yep. your her, Bible. Her book your is Bible. well used. It's been well used. Um, she has no secrets. And so what she knows, you'll know. And um, I just love it. I love it. I love it. Patty, jump in here. I mean, I, I see well, the I, book is well read. That, well, I have the, a, a book uh, that was even yeah. before that book. The first issue. The very yeah. first issue. And I just have to share something about Wendy. So I'm getting ready to start my dog store. This is years year ago. And I, I mean, and I think I've got the world by the tail, so to speak, already. And I've been to a trade show, la da 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 da. You know, so I'm thinking I'm pretty hot stuff already. And I decided, well, you know, this thing's happened right down the street, you know, well down the road from us. I better go see what it's all about. And so I took Ernie, my dog, with me, mm -hmm. sitting there in the second row, you know, waiting for things to happen. And Wendy walks in, and she's she's British, and she's tall, and she's straightforward. And she took one look at me and said, "You need to get your dog's thyroid checked." And I'm just, my eyes got big and wide, and I'm like, what in the world? I mean, this lady doesn't even know me. I don't even have a name tag on, and she's telling me I need to get my dog's thyroid checked. Well, and the, a few minutes later, she kind of looked as quizzically as I was looking at her, and she says, you know, you should probably get yours too. You're probably just like him. And you know what? She was right. <laughs> and I asked her the following year, how did you know that? And she said, your dog's got no whiskers. His coat looks awful. And... Sure enough, she was right. The thyroid tests were exactly this. right. Mine was running hypothyroid too, and I was like, holy smokes, I better pay attention to what this lady's got to say. All so right. I started, and I went on you know, the dietary program that she recommends, where you're picking the meats and vegetables for the season. Uh, you're, you're doing muscle testing to figure out what the right things are for your dog. And I kind of blew her mind because I really just couldn't do the muscle testing, but I pulled out my crystals and started dowsing. And she rolled her eyes and she, and you know, when she saw I was getting the same information that she was getting, it was okay after that. But it, her, the information as far, as far as the, uh, the vegetables and the, the meats for the season is so accurate. Um, I can buy for the store. I know when allergies are coming. I know when skin issues are coming. I know, you know, when liver and gallbladder things are gonna show up, I, it's, so, it's accurate. And the Chinese have been doing it for hundreds of years, so we're just pretty much echoing what they're doing, really. Trace in yep. Houston says, I'm gonna get the book today. <laughs> Good, um, it's definitely worth it. <laughs> yeah, okay, so Trace, you heard it right yep. there from the experts, it's definitely worth it. Harris Creed, uh, a sizzle reel out of Patty's answer there, I thought that was <laughs> fabulous. How has, uh, how has it been a resource Moving forward, you're 17 years in mm -hmm. with your business. Mm -hmm. You've talked about how you buy the food accordingly. Um, how else has it been a resource? Well, just because uh, the, she also instructs in homeopathic remedies and things that, uh, let's say your dog has bloat, different remedies that will buy you time until you get into a vet, different herbs that you can use for different reasons, uh, flower essences. Um, she doesn't do acupuncture at camp, but she does acupressure. And so knowing these things that you can do on your dog, and I do acupressure on myself if I have a, 
a sinus headache or something. There's so many things that she knows, and she brings in experts to this camp that are just amazing. It's just, I, you can't even fathom how much you can learn in a, in a weekend. How have you picked up, and I mean, I would think that you are, Jen, similar to us, and that you're like, uh, you know, you want to continually challenge yourself, clearly by the degrees you're pursuing. You love to learn. I do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you, you always want to challenge yourself and get better. What have you learning from being a part of this and like the knowledge that you're picking up that you can relate to the audience? We have folks watching in Charlotte, folks watching in Baltimore and Houston, outside Chicago right now. One of the biggest things that I um, have an opportunity to do is speak with folks that are struggling with their dog in one shape or form, um, whether it's allergies or strange itching or they're fussing with their feet or they're constantly getting ear infections or they have digestive issues. and. Sometimes it's a Hail Mary that they're coming to us. They've uh -huh. tried everything else. Their dog's in real crisis. And now they feel like, well, I have to do something, so I need to feed them better. I'm going to start with nutrition. Or it's a brand new puppy. And, you know, we have somebody that's just taken on a new family member, and they want to get it right from the start. And somebody recommended this to them. So really how I learn is by case study, honestly. Mm -hmm. The more that I'm exposed to the issues that people are having, and we have issues. We have over-vaccination in dogs. We have people adopting dogs that are right. mixed breeds, and you just don't know. You right. don't know what's about to happen, or how healthy the parental dogs were, or, or anything. So, or things like these doodles where they're breaking down right. the ethnic backgrounds just like crazy. Right, so yeah. here you have this puzzle. A dog can't tell you what's wrong with them. You just observe symptoms. Or maybe it's behavioral issues, unwanted behaviors that all of a sudden, you know, the dog's destroying things. The dog mm -hmm. is, you know, uh, can't be left alone. They're anxious. They're freaking about, out about stuff that they never did before. Everything is tied to nutrition. Uh -huh. And the more I peel back the onion, mm -hmm. The more that I realize that, that if you could get your dog calm and stable mm -hmm. and focused and meet their needs, then you're off to the races. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really, it's like, it's the same with the child. If the child goes to school and is hungry or in pain or uncomfortable, they can't focus, they can't learn. Well, neither can your dog. Right. So really, it comes back to making sure the needs of the dog are cared for mm -hmm. and that they're their best selves. So then you can do things with your dog. Your dog is thriving. It's not just living the day out, you know, on, a, on whatever, mm -hmm. and thank God it made it through the day, you know? Mm -hmm. No, your dog gets to be a dog. It gets to be athletic if it wants to. It could be a working dog, a police dog, you know, uh, a nose dog. It could be um, an agility dog. It could work and work hard and be successful. Love that. Um, and if you're a breeder, you you have an expensive dog right and you're about to yeah. sell other expensive dogs right that you don't want genetic you don't want to flip on the bad genetic switch right because of poor nutrition you just don't this is an investment you know it's a family member well there are there are breeders sizzle reel that yeah. Harris. that yeah. was great right there great yeah. sizzle reel there are breeders that come to wendy's camp i mean jane kelso yes, she example. breeds a long time breeder mm -hmm. of labs and I, rem I can't remember the guy's name but someone that came all the way from la with cavalier king charles spaniels breeder mm -hmm. and they're long known for having heart problems well he'd right. been working with the this diet for many many years and you know the dogs are getting better generation after generation and uh jane's dogs are lovely dogs you know, oh we have just, 12 yeah. 12 yeah. generations of volhar dogs in jane's dogs yeah 12 <laughs> 12 i mean that's a microcosm I mean, of success exactly there's that's what i try to tell people you know the proof is in the pudding it's it's about longevity yeah there's some great ideas out there about nutrition but there's no longevity so in the short term, your dog's not having an issue with that, great. But 10 years from now, we can't say that that's not gonna be the case because you just haven't been in business that long. And right. it, although it's a great idea, it's not proven. Mm -hmm. So we have to be cautious. Uh -huh. And you know, one thing that Wendy always says is that too much of any one thing is no good, uh -huh. which is why diversity is important. With which, the diet. Yeah, yeah. you mm -hmm. have to have a balanced, fresh, right. healthy space that is flexible because just like humans, no dogs are the same. So you have different metabolisms, you have different sensibilities, yeah. you have different sensitivities. And so the great thing about this diet, honestly, is that it's time tested and it can be trusted and it's flexible because as your dog ages or depending on where you are in the growth space, mm -hmm. 
you can accommodate for that without having to change the diet. And, Great it's, and it's seasonal. Yeah. Yeah. It's seasonal. Right. It's fresh. It's something that anybody can do at home without right. having to worry about any type of balance. And, and I love uh, that it's so specific that it's not just day to day. Sometimes it can be at this moment in time. You got you know, it. And dogs, you know, dogs selectively mm -hmm. know these things and, and will find what they need you know, on their own. I sure. mean, if you mm -hmm. ever look at them eating grass... You know, right. They might be selecting herbs out mm -hmm. in the wild, so or need bacteria, right? right. Or they, settling their stomach. They, yep, they might. Yeah. And so, right. So, you know, we we're just like you said, being observant. You know, observe, remember, compare, adjust. You know? Listen, feeding your dog is one of the most important things that you'll ever do. It's the, the it greatest the most time, right? <laughs> but it's right. if you take yeah. the time to be with them when you feed them, you're providing them with food. That you're a pack member, so you're here. You are the leader of the pack, bringing food to your pack. And it's the most important time that you can have with your dog. Mm -hmm. If you take that chance, you can notice things about them. You can, you can watch how they're doing, how they're mm -hmm. reacting, how they're behaving, if they're eating right. You can see all of those things and really tune in to each other, which I think we need more time away from electronics. Cell phones. Yeah, and just oh, be yeah. with your dog. I totally agree. <laughs> Jump in here, Brenda. Yeah, no, be with your dog is absolutely correct. Um, one of the things, my, my, I have three dogs, mm -hmm. and two are Belgian Malinois, and they are now, will be yes. 14 years old Good. Good in July. You. Congratulations. And they've been on the all hard diet for over 10 years. And um, Obviously, they're going to be 14, so they have some issues, yeah. obviously, because they're, they're, more, they're above senior, yeah. right? They're 98. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, every time I take them to the vet, they get acupuncture and they get um, chiropractic adjustments. Um, they just rant and rave. Your dogs look so good for their age, mm -hmm. their skin and their coat. They don't smell like a dog. No, they don't. And my shepherd is 10 years old, and I just had him at uh, Volhard Camp last week, and people were amazed at him being 10. He's a maniac at 10. I mean, you would have thought he was two. Maniac. I mean, he was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and so he has you know, plenty of energy. The dogs have energy. I love hearing that because yeah. I, I own two German shepherds, mm -hmm. Max and Leo, and I uh, had another dog who, she was a mix. She was a chow shepherd mix. She lived to 17. She's a phenomenal dog. The boys are purebred shepherds. I love hearing success stories like this of yeah. like 10 and youthful and longevity because you're told mm -hmm. 8 to 10 right. potentially for a shepherd then right. the back legs start going yeah. and then you're going to start thinking about quality of life so I mean keep right. talking to me about this you're making me yeah. feel good my <laughs> dogs my 14 year olds are going up and down stairs now That's I would awesome. not say that they're running up and down the steps but they're going up and down the steps right. mm -hmm. and they still are outside loving their toys and walking and with no help from us getting them in and out and mm -hmm. uh, it's important it's the food and it's the flexibility that you have with this diet and the mixes um, make it so convenient and all the research has been done for you and you can trust the research um, the pro uh, the ingredients all human grade ingredients and then of course you can supplement with your protein choices and um, and if you make it from scratch, as she gives you the exact recipes yeah, in there's here, there's nothing hidden. You can then you can you, can, you know yourself. play with your own um, herbs that you want to use in it, and vegetables that you add. It's it's phenomenal. And right you, now, what do you think, Patty? Jump in here with this conversation. Well, I'm just you know I just take it all in because you know there's not a week that goes by when I don't look at her book for some sort of reference. You know, somebody's asked me something in the store and I and I flip back and say, "Woo, let's let's see what season it is. What what's your dog supposed to be eating?" And then I can you know find the right fit for them. Uh, you know, I don't remember all of it, but I, I'd use it as a reference. And they're just things that you remember. Like you me mentioned the acupuncture and mm -hmm. the observing. Well, I always remember when I was told to watch the dog, watch Ernie after he eats okay, and look, if he, is he long licking somewhere? Is he nibbling somewhere? And because you want to be looking at different um, acupuncture, acupressure places where maybe he's trying to stimulate something or calm down something that maybe he needed from his food or got too much of from his food. And so I just always remember that you know, observation, you know, it's just so important. You just gotta, 
you got to watch. you got to be a dog for a while. We have some questions coming yeah. in, which uh, I want to relay to you and Patty, sure. get your thoughts as well. First, let's thank some of the folks that are watching. Rick Henderson watching in Charlotte, North Carolina. Laura Jackson here in Charlottesville. David Stone is watching. Austin Moran. Michaela Sacre in Orange County. Daniel Kaufman, your buddy from Public Fish and Oyster. Oh, boy. Is watching right now. <laughs> Stephanie Alice Martin. Guys, if you can like and share the stream, that would mean the world mm -hmm. to us. Just give it a like or share on Facebook. The question that's come in, from Colleen Wise Owens and she says could you advise about a dog who eats a lot of grass when out in the yard is this a symptom of mineral deficiency and if so what should I add to his diet that's a great question that and thanks question. for asking it we get it quite often um, it could be a number of things and so there is a little bit of an elimination game that one has to play since they can't just tell you Sometimes dogs eat grass because they have an upset stomach, like you mentioned earlier, Jerry, uh -huh. and they're just trying to get whatever's bothering them, gassiness, whatever that is, out. Um, and you should get the results of that shortly, um, if that's the case. <laughs> they don't hide that sort of thing, <laughs> no. usually in the middle of the night and random times. But um, sometimes it's also about gut bacteria, to be honest. Uh -huh. um, there is actinobacteria that exists in soil. And dogs will chew at the base of the roots of fresh spring grass, which we have growing now everywhere. They're mm -hmm. sweet. And they'll chew at the base of that and they ingest some actinobacteria and that actually is a very healthy bacteria for the gut, for the dog. So if they're feeling like, um, dogs will seek out what they need. If they're feeling some kind of symptom inside, they'll instinctively go seek out whatever they need in order to make themselves feel whole. What I would tell you to do at this point um, dogs should not be grazing. That should not be happening. Eating grass is completely healthy. Right. Sometimes it won't even make them throw up. They will eat grass. It's nutritional. They get mm -hmm. the chlorophyll and we're off to the races. You can add fermented vegetable. So what I would say, it's a human grade mm -hmm. fermented cabbage. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that the human version of it doesn't have onion in it because that's toxic for dogs. Sometimes they add that to our uh, sauerkraut yeah, yeah. for flavor. So no onion. But if you look and you find a Celtic sea salt with a nice ginger in it sometimes, cabbage, you can have um, fermented carrots or beets in with it, that's no problem. Mm -hmm. And you add a little bit of that to the food, you will find that they will stop grazing. That bacteria that's in the sauerkraut is live. It's ready to be used by the dog's body and it helps to balance that gut bacteria, make them feel better. Your thoughts, Patty? Hey, I'm, I'm going with the ex expert right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I've even started fermenting my own vegetables to yeah. add to my diet instead of the steamed vegetables. And so it's really been very beneficial to, nice. for the gut microbiome. We have another <laughs> question coming in, this one on the Volhard page. Um, and, you know, I, I see my dogs doing this, too. Yes, it's kind of a gross question, but I think it applies <laughs> uh, here. I see. Uh, I know it's coming. My, my, Bring it my on. dog... Um, eats what comes out of him all the time. Oh, love Should that. we uh -huh. be worried about this? Um, and if so, why is he doing this? I see my yeah. dogs do that all the time. So sometimes, you know, um, it's really not the most comfortable thing to watch or partake in. Um, sometimes they eat other dogs' um, fecal matter. Sometimes they will uh, partake of their own because there are undigested things still in the fecal matter. It's again about bacteria, I'm going to tell you. Um, it's also about deficiency in some cases. So again, it's an elimination game a little bit and you have to try things. I would go ahead and try first and foremost, I would add a little fermented vegetable to the food. There's something missing and it could be a, what we call dysbiosis, a ratio of good and bad bacteria in the dog's body mm -hmm. that's thrown off and they think they're gonna get it because when the fecal matter comes out, it has shedded bacteria in it. So that's what they're doing. Um, although it's not our favorite moments with them. Don't let them kiss you after. Um, <laughs> That's, right. but That's what I try to make sure. The <laughs> second thing that I would do is I would take a look at the diet. Mm -hmm. I, there is something missing in the diet or there's something that's not being digested in the diet that's making its way out that the dog feels that they could reap a benefit from uh -huh. yet again. Uh -huh. well, second that, that brings up a point because uh, we, we know from studying that um, dry dog foods digest way longer than you know raw foods about 16 hours yep. right mm -hmm. uh, they raw, sit right they sit forever i mean do do you find that people ask you more about um you know dogs that are what's the big word eating fecal matter but there's a long c word i forget that what what, what it is a I'm drawing a line. or something like that yes right you, okay right so do you find that it happens more to dogs that are eating commercially 
made kibble or canned food or versus the we raw do. food or anything? We, we find that strange eating mm-hmm. habits usually mm-hmm. happen when the diet for some reason is not providing all the nutrients that the dog needs. We also find that some folks that are making homemade diets that may or may not be balanced, they're mm-hmm. doing their best, obviously, uh, but sometimes if they're using something in that diet that is passing through and not digesting, then the mm-hmm. dog isn't reaping all of the nutrients that are supposedly being provided. Um, you think you're giving it to the dog, but if it's making it to the front lawn, then your dog's missing some things. The right. great thing about Volhard, and I can speak to it, um, is that I know everyone's going to be upset about this, but the fecal matter goes in half when you mm, start feeding yes. Volhard. Really? You get half the amount because mm-hmm. it's almost completely digestible right. except for the insoluble fiber. Huh. Mm-hmm. So you really, I know, like I said, everybody's going to be upset. Who wants more poop, right? Mm. So if you live in an urban area and you live in a high rise, I'm telling you what, it'd be so nice not to have to walk your dog a hundred times because totally. you're feeding the, the lawn. So it really makes a difference. Um, my dog, my, I have a hound mix, uh-huh. and I fed from uh-huh. kibble for a long time when she was a puppy. Um, she would go four times a day. Now she goes once in the morning, on time, once in the evening, on time, and then they're half the amount. <laughs> mm-hmm. Should yep. it be regulated, or not regulated, but like scheduled? You should see patterns. Yeah, okay. Unless, uh, and, and it's easier on us as mm-hmm. homeowners to have patterns. We feed at regular times. Of course. Right. Because mm-hmm. then we can expect, and we can help our dogs not hold on to that stuff, Well, and right? selfishly, and, and I hate to say this, but as selfishly as the human who has, is here 80 hours a week, right. having a pattern is nice. Yeah, Something it that is. you can kind of like, a, a habit. And dogs do really well with structure. They, yeah. they really do. I'm, I'm supposed to get fed here. I, you know, dad or mom's coming home here. I can expect to do this here. They really thrive in that situation. When things start to get scattered, not all dogs handle that well, which creates stress. Stress creates digestive issues. There's all kinds of things. The dog is a really complex symbiotic being. Right. And, ta- and taking this a step further, you, you mentioned having patterns, knowing if I feed my dogs these meats and these herbs right. this time, when the next season comes, I am not going to have this problem, this problem, right. this problem. Mm-hmm. You feed the correct proteins in advance of the season. It's almost like protective. It's not medicine, but it's, well, Chinese medicine, I guess. But yeah. it's, it's proactively. It's proactive yeah. nutrition is what it is. It really oh, is. Yeah. We're focused on wellness. We're not right. doing reactive. We're not waiting till our dogs are sick to go, Oh boy, yeah, we're saying done that. Right. we don't want our dogs to ever get sick. This is what I tell people. Don't you want to have a healthy, healthy, healthy dog that's just not with us anymore because of old age? Or do you want to have a healthy, healthy, long time sick dog that you watch decline and then not be with us? I would like the first one mm-hmm. where one day out of old age, my healthy dog moves on. And yeah. they die healthy, yeah. if that's even a thing. No, I totally want that. That's what I want to do. <laughs> uh, another question coming in. This is from uh, Grace in Richmond. Why does my dog have so much gook in his eyes mm. and wax mm. dirt in his ears? Yeah, Ooh. welcome to the time of year of yep. pollen. I'm so <laughs> yeah. sorry. Now, I don't know what kind of dog you have. Um, so feel free. If anybody's got questions that they need follow-up on, I literally, you can contact the company and we will get you answers. So if your question's not being answered today or uh-huh. whatever, follow up, please. Okay. Um, and if you're local, we'll have we'll have Jen come down to our store. Yes, and we'll have Q and A time. And yes. You can, you can come so and one thing time. you can do. So a lot of dogs suffer. They're right at the pollen level. They okay. take it in the face a lot. Mm-hmm. So what you can do for that is obviously nutrition is a thing. It could be a symptom of a sensitivity to something, mm-hmm. or an over active immune system response to something. Um, But we have to realize we are in the spring, everything's blooming, your dog is a living being Mm -hmm. and it's reacting to that. What I would suggest to you is go to the store and buy um, a eye drop that's made by Simulacin. It's a homeopathic Mm -hmm. um, flushing eye drop. And if your dog will let you do it, Start off slow. Make sure that's a good time for the both of you. It's for people, too. Yeah, it's for people. You put it, wash the eyes out, get that pollen out, wipe their face, 
and get that stuff off of their whiskers so that this way they're not having to breathe it in and keep it in their eyes and it really makes a difference. Um, Carol right. Singleton, thank you for watching. Steven Grudering, thank you for watching. John Gilmore, Meg Taylor, Dan Barnes, Rick Henderson. Like and share the stream, guys. That would mean the world to us. Another question coming in. You're crushing it. Um, yeah. Should I bring it. table scraps from the table to my dog? My vet says mixing table scraps. <laughs> Mixing table scraps with her dinner is fine. Is this truly okay? So it all depends on what you feed. I guess it depends on the food for dinner. So right? let's yes, just exactly. say I'm, I'm going to make the assumption you might be feeding kibble, and that's what they're nervous about, mixing fresh food with kibble food. Um, there's really no problem in mixing fresh food with kibble food. And mm -hmm. I actually would encourage you to get some live enzymes into that food to help with your dog's gut microbiome. What I would say and caution you on is if you're eating a steak and what you cut off on your plate is all the fat and you've not left a healthy, nutritious piece of meat or something like that for the dog, then I would forego sharing that. I mean, they're like, if you somebody only passed you the worst parts of that meat, you would yeah. become unhealthy. Sure. But if you have steamed vegetables that don't have any spice on them, maybe a little olive oil roasted, um, what I do at home is I literally go to the market I pick out the seasonal vegetables, I put them in the oven, I'll put a little olive oil or coconut oil if I feel like bringing the islands in, and I uh, <laughs> roast them, and I get them just fork soft, and then I put them through the food processor, and I chop them up, and I add them to my dog's food. Um, you can do that with a kibble. Believe me, there's only up in nutrition from where you are with kibble, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and the live enzymes will do great things. Um, if your dog has never seen a fresh vegetable before, I would uh, introduce it in moderation because mm -hmm. it's fiber and it's live and their bodies are going to have to adjust. Mm -hmm. So instead of giving a full cup of veggies in the kibble, right. I might introduce a quarter of a cup first, depending on the size of your dog, and let them get used to it and see which ones they like, which ones they prefer. A lot yeah. of questions coming in. Yeah, yeah and jump your, in your tip about roasting them and then breaking them down with a food uh, processor yep. is really, really important because dogs can't break down. If you give them, you know, a lot of people say, oh, if your dog's really fat, give them whole green beans. Well, that's great, but they will eliminate a whole green bean, sure which will. is really surprising if you're watching. So you've got to help them break these vegetables down. Their, their gut can't do it. Yeah, I puree uh, my. Go ahead, Brenda. Sorry. I was going to say I puree my vegetables yes. uh, mm -hmm. mostly, and or have them finely chopped, almost like riced, and it mm -hmm. makes them go a little further because you're, you're not putting in that large of a quantity. And again, it, you know, it's an investment, and that's one of the things that Wendy even talks about in the book is that you know, it is an investment to go and buy uh, the proper dog food product and the proper protein product. And mm -hmm. so you have to think, where do you want to put your money? Do you want to put your money in going to the vet or do you want to put the money in the quality food that we, that you're feeding your dog and not go to the vet so much, right? And that's what I prefer well, to so. do. But she also talks about taking a kibble um, buy the best that you can and, and adding the fresh right. food to it um, to make that a better quality meal. I love it. So, Another yeah. question coming in. Actually, we have two more questions coming in. Keep the questions coming. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She right. loves it. I can yeah, tell. She I, does. Does. I live for this. <laughs> uh, Colleen, you're going to have to help me with this word here. Um, okay. Colleen Wise Owens says, can you discuss, is it hyperkeratosis of the nose in dogs? Am I saying that word correctly? Hyperkeratosis? Keratosis? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it probably, that probably, I'm going to need more information for that particular question. Okay. So what I would say is that um, if you could contact me, uh -huh. I would like to get some background information about the breed, how old your dog is, what you're currently feeding. I don't want to give out information sure. that might be misplaced uh -huh. um, on something like that. Um, what I can say is that the ingredients in our particular food in Volhard um, does support the health of all the organs and it does support um, you know the health of all the black lines around the eyes the color of the nose those kinds of things so it may be a nutritional thing that's happening there and I'm sorry to be vague um, but I really would like to learn more and maybe have a consultation with you and see how I can help. I love it I appreciate that authenticity there I'm gonna mm -hmm. I can tag her now Colleen Fantastic. Wise Owens where <laughs> how should I say she should contact you um she can re do, uh, you can literally email me if you okay. want email oh I think I know where we can find her okay. yeah <laughs> she works at Animal Connection okay. I hide in plain sight. Go. We're going to play that. Mm -hmm. So let me throw good this question. to you here. And this is another good question. This is about the sheen of a coat. What's oh, yeah. the proper sheen for a dog's coat? Is it weather or seasonal dependent? So, um, you know, the sheen of a coat tells you a lot. You know, the 
the first thing that comes to mind is fat levels. So if your dog is struggling without the proper fat levels, you're going to see it in the coat first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my dogs, when I first switched them to Volhard, I had a young hound mix whose, I thought, coat looked fantastic uh, the way it was. And then I started the food, and I feed the AMPM diet because I think it's the freshest of the fresh, so I like to add the vegetables and be like Julia Childs, you know, yeah. <laughs> have exactly. my own cooking show. Um, so, like yeah, we that. have a whole moment together, my dogs and I. But I started feeding her the AMPM diet, and she came up like the Chrysler building. I get... People stop in their tracks. I don't know if this happens to you, Brenda. It does. All People the time. stop in their tracks and they're like, "What are, are you Harris, putting?" Harris, I think like, we had pictures. Yeah. 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 He'll you know, put them on are screen. you a are you moisturizing? That's what people always ask me all the time. Do you put something on her? I'm like, no. Do you add egg to her diet? I'm like, it, there's egg in the Volhar diet, mm -hmm. but I don't purposefully add egg. It's just when you're healthy on the inside. Mm -hmm. It shows for them on the outside. And the coat is the easiest way. So your dog should have a shiny coat yep. mm -hmm. that's all the time. That's right. Healthy and is soft. Is that your wolf pack there? That is my <laughs> wolf pack. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. For the, yeah. You can obviously tell which ones are 14, but yeah. anyway. They look fantastic. Uh, they thoughts do. on this conversation, Patty mm -hmm. Bowden? Uh, I was just thinking, you know, we're mentioning AMP, and maybe Jen would like to describe, maybe not oh, like the, whoops, the complete nuts and bolts of it, but sure. we're talking about AM and PM and why you do a different diet in the morning than you do sure. in the evening, and maybe mm -hmm. roughly what's in this stuff? That's you know, what's question. in the diet? Yeah, so here's the 30,000 mile view, guys. Yeah. Strap in. Yep. Okay, so Wendy's got two different diets. One is the original diet, which has a two-part foundation mix, what I just referenced. Okay. The AM foundation mix in the morning and a PM that you feed in the evening. And in the day, with both of those fed, that is a complete and balanced diet with the protein that the uh, pet parent adds. The NDF2, the natural diet foundation two, is the second diet. And that was born out of convenience. <laughs> Everybody right. who was feeding the AMPM diet said, what if we were to have a version of this where I didn't have to add yogurt and I didn't have to add a vegetable? What would that look like? And Wendy went back into her kitchen and out came NDF2, which is the same ingredients as AMPM, but only in a more convenient format where you feed one foundation mm -hmm. mix a day, you know, both times in the day. You just add meat a little bit of warm water and stir and you're off to the races. So there is a difference between the two. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you adjust for convenience, you lose some things. And one of the important things that I want to bring forward with the AM PM diet is that the carbohydrate in the AM PM diet is fed in the morning with the AM porridge piece. And then the protein <laughs> is fed in the evening with the PM crumble piece. This separation of ingredients allows a senior dog uh -huh a dog suffering from digestive issues uh -huh. or trying to heal from illness or surgery, it allows them a smoother digestive process because the enzymes in the dog's body can focus on like foods every time that they're served food. So it really helps a dog that's struggling with digestive enzyme issues, as in it with a senior dog, mm -hmm. with a slowdown, get the most out of the food. Okay. I like the AMPM diet because I add fresh vegetable, I add mm -hmm. fresh kefir, I add fresh yogurt, I get to stir it up, and I can control, like Patty said earlier, the seasonal application of different vegetables, things that grow above the ground, things that mm -hmm. grow below the ground through the course of the year. That doesn't minimize the fantasticness of NDF2. What's in NDF2, you still get the vegetable and you still get the yogurt, but the vegetable is a carrot, and it's a dehydrated carrot that's added already. So you have the vegetable in there. Mm -hmm. And the yogurt is the probiotics that are already added in there, also in a dehydrated or fermented way. So that's the difference. It's just about convenience, really, and lifestyle. The ingredients are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Jerry, you asked me to talk about the ingredients for a moment. And so <clears throat> our diet has been the same for 35 years. It's not changed. The day that it rolled out after being tested through fecal matter, urine, blood testing, and made sure that the dog's body could appropriate the nutrients correctly, it has stayed the same. There's nothing broken. There's no gimmicks. There's no, hey, shiny keys over here. Let's, mm -hmm. let's all veer off this path and go with what the latest fabulous popular person has said. Right. It's not about that. Wendy is tested. She's tried. And if it's not broken, we don't fix it. 
We have thousands of dogs who have been helped by this diet, and there's no reason to change it. Love your passion. I know. Yeah. So, and the other thing that goes with that is all along this diet has been going on is the blood testing correct. with Dr. Jean. With and, Dr. Jean Dodds. And, right, yep. and okay. she's been logging the success of the, of, with blood tests. I mean, one thing that's encouraged when you're doing a, a raw food program is to do an annual or semi-annual right. blood test so you have a benchmark. And then you can, and she teaches you how to look at your blood tests and you know if your BUN levels are off, mm -hmm. hey, I need to make some adjustments. You know, it's that specific what you learn at Holistic Dog Camp. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I love it. What do we have here? What are we doing with this? <laughs> this is NDF2. Yes, it and is. And Jen has brought some bags for us to give away. Okay. At Animal Connection. I love it. And so if people want that are liking and sharing uh, are interested, they can let me know. We'll... First five people will get a free bag of this, and you can try it. There you go, guys. Go I'll to even, Animal if, Connection. If you're out of state, I will even ship it to you. Oh, Woo -hoo. Whoa, you, you go, Patty. Yes, I will. You will do that. I'll do generous. it for Jen. <laughs> That's very generous. So. Go to Animal Connection in the McIntyre <laughs> Office Park, yeah. Central Virginia's longest-running all-natural pet store. 17 years, five bags for free. Yeah. We've got, we got five bags we're going to give away. Yeah, I love keep it. Keep on holding it up. Go say it's hi to the team, guys. Too. Do it now and, uh, and try the, the diet, five. the first five. And we, do, we, we are stocking at Animal Connection. We I already have the enzymes in stock I right, love that it. you can use for no matter what kind of feed uh, that you're doing. It will bring the life force back up into The Volhar page anything. is blowing up right. right now. Oh, yeah. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Volhar dog nutrition is blowing up because <laughs> yeah. I can see it. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> It's good. It's, it's still good. running. It's Woo! good. I love it. I love what's happening here. Um, final thoughts. We'll go final thoughts. You know what? Let's give you a chance here. Oh final thoughts. Gosh. Anywhere you want to go, Brenda. My final thoughts is that, you know, your dogs are now your best friend and your companion, and they've evolved over the years from being outside dogs to inside dogs. And as the, as the holistic healthcare movement has evolved as well, you want to forward that to your pets so they can be with you as long as they can because their life expectancy, as I mentioned, is not as long as ours. And so you want to do the best that you can for them, and you can't do better if you don't know better. So educating yourself, moving forward, mm -hmm. um, trying to feed the best that you can, and we know that you can't necessarily feed raw or you can't buy the AMPM or the NDF2. They have another product called Endurance that can be added to kibble to make it complete and balanced and healthier kibble and adding little things to the kibble. Um, just do the best that you can and educate yourself and trust and believe in the product that you're using. Well said. Mm -hmm. Thank Very you. Very good answer right there. I love <laughs> Thank that. You. Final thoughts from you, Jeb. What's on your mm -hmm. brain there? Yeah, I think, you know, I just want to point out the differentiator with this company than other companies. We're a small family-owned company. You know, we're, we're not one of these big boys that are out there. And the best part about that for you as the consumer is that not only with the food do you get a great nutritional product, but you get us. We're your mm -hmm. family. We're there. It doesn't take us a week to answer your message. It doesn't take us a week to answer a call when you're in crisis. You call the office. You write us an email. We're going to get back to you within 24 hours. We're not going to let your crisis sit by the wayside because we're too big. We are about customer service. Love we it. love your dogs. That's what we want. We're in it for the dogs. We are dog people. This is, for us, this is why we're in business. So that's never going to change. We have the highest quality ingredients that's never going to change. They're all non-GMO. They're all human grade. They're all from the United States. Um, these diets have been around a very long time. Wendy Volhard was the first to bring a natural diet to the United States way back when in the <laughs> 70s. So all it's exciting that everybody's jumping on board, but it's also good to know that she's been there, she's yeah. done that. We have a good product. You get a family with that product, and we're ready to support you no matter where you are in the life stage of your dog. Love that. Let's 100% turn that into a sizzle reel, Absolutely. Harris. That is a sizzle reel for certain. Uh, we call it in advertising a pop, a proof of performance. And when you're a pioneer like Wendy, and then you have other people follow you to market, you have a pop, a proof of performance. And I think that's what Volhard certainly embodies. The final thoughts, Patty Boat. Well, I tell you, I wouldn't be uh, where I am today without uh, learning from Wendy, my first uh, year in business and helping launch Animal Connection. And I love that she's accessible and she will, you know, she'll answer emails. I mean, she's 
you know, she's traveling a lot and she's, she's been doing this a long time, but she'll always answer your emails and, um, you know, she was very helpful for me getting my dog back on track when he obviously had thyroid problems. Uh, he also, uh, we had started the raw diet back when he had, was diagnosed with cancer and I was just feeding straight raw food and I did not know to do other things. So, I mean, she straightened me out. So, you know. <laughs> All of us. Yep. All of us for so, sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I went from being a big dog to maybe a more educated dog. I love <laughs> it. Right. I love so, it, guys. Uh, what's um, working local is undoubtedly powered by Animal Connection, which is Central Virginia's longest running all natural pet store. We thank you, Faye Cox Gutierrez and Crystal McIntosh Townsend for sharing the feed. We would highly encourage you to go visit Patty Bowden and her team in the McIntyre office park where you can get one of five free bags of this Volhard dog food. And you can just honestly go to an epicenter of excellence and an <laughs> epicenter of like wow. celebration <laughs> of animals. Um, and I think that's what your store embodies. Thank you. Um, and you no, you have done it over 17 years and it's impressive. Thank it's you. totally impressive. Um, she is Patty Bowden. She is Jen Carter. She is Brenda Moyer. That's Moyer. Right. Yeah. Moyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Jerry Miller, and this is What's mm -hmm. Barking Local, guys, Wednesdays mm -hmm. at 3 p.m. on the I Love Seville Network. I would encourage you just to pull out your phone and put Wednesdays at 3 o'clock on That's your right. iPhone calendar <laughs> because, you as you can see, it's educational, it's entertainment, it's informative, and it's just... Um, and sometimes slapstick. Some, <laughs> some folks that love animals talk yeah. about animals. That's right, That's exactly. Right. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> exactly. Thank you kindly for joining us. We will see you tomorrow at 12.30 uh, with the I Love Seville Show. Patty Bone, you crushed it today. Ah. Boom. Right there. Have a good Thank afternoon, you. guys. <laughs> Thank good you. work. All right, Thank you guys. You. Uh, Yay. Way to go. Yes. Thank you. Done. Yeah, very oh, good, Jen. Well, you go, girl. See, you that did didn't girl. hurt a bit. I didn't have to say anything, but Judah's like, you didn't you hurt a calm. bit. We got a photo, <laughs> Judah. Thank you, you Judah. Thought he'd get in there.